So let's have a brief introduction to section 3.5 on isomorphisms. This is actually not a very long section. The main point of this section is to realise that there are lots of different kinds of isomorphisms around because we are dealing with vector spaces and norm spaces and Banach spaces and so on. And if you're into category theory, then you'll know that we're dealing with lots of different kinds of categories. And then our notion of morphisms is going to vary from the, in the different categories. And then we're going to have different notions of isomorphism. Well, I'm not going to express this in category theory language, but I am going to point out that there's lots of different kinds of isomorphisms um, that we have to watch out for. And you have to know which one you're dealing with. And as usual, it's in context. And of course, if you go off and look at groups, then you've got group isomorphisms. Um, we're not doing groups in this module, but if you were, you'd have group isomorphisms. And if you had topological groups, you have topological group isomorphisms. And so on. Anyway, so what have we got? We've got, first of all, vector spaces, and then there's a notion of linear isomorphisms. So, a linear isomorphism is a linear map, which is a bijection. And that can only happen for certain kinds of vector spaces, though, namely a pair of vector spaces which are isomorphic. If you've got two vector spaces whose dimension is different, then it's hopeless. And, and that even goes for infinite dimensional vector spaces. If you've got Hamble bases with different cardinalities, um, there's a challenging problem sheet question to prove that the cardinality of the, of a, of the size of your Hamble basis is... Uh, is unique, so you can't have two different kinds of cardinality infinite Hamel bases for your vector space. But this is something you know very well for finite dimensional vector spaces, uniqueness of dimension, you can't have two different bases for different sizes. And so you get this notion of isomorphic vector spaces corresponding to how big is the Hamel basis of that vector space. So your vector spaces are isomorphic if you can find a bijective linear map between them, and of course, that means it's one-to-one -one and onto, and um, so that means T of E has to equal F, and T has to be one-one, and remember that T is one-to-one -one for a linear map, if and only if the kernel of T is just zero, the zero element of E, because T is linear, that wouldn't be generally true for any odd function, but for a linear map, you're one to one if and only if you've got a trivial kernel. So, then if you've got one, that's a linear isomorphism. If you know you're working just with vector spaces, you can safely say isomorphism. But if you're not sure whether you're working with vector spaces or norm spaces or Banach spaces, then it's probably safest to say linear isomorphism so that the reader doesn't mistakenly think you're talking about somebody to do with continuity. Here's an easy exercise. If you've got a linear isomorphism from E to F, then its inverse map is a linear isomorphism from F to E. So that's an easy exercise. But you should try it, probably, just to make sure you're very happy with it. Here's my comment about the Hamel bases. So if you've got isomorphic vector spaces and you take a Hamel basis of 1, a linear independent spanning set for one of them, and you apply your linear isomorphism, you get a linearly independent spanning set for the other space. And so you map from Hamel bases to Hamel bases, and so the dimension of your space on the one side is the same as the dimension on the other, even if you're talking about infinite dimensional spaces. And you might want to look at the question on the challenging problem sheet to see if you can prove that the cardinality is unique for um, the size of a Hamel basis. Now, if you work with norm spaces, we want some continuity. And here's the first problem, that the inverse of a continuous linear isomorphism between norm spaces can be discontinuous. 
This doesn't happen for Banach spaces. So a nice thing about Banach spaces is that if you've got a continuous linear isomorphism from one Banach space to another, the inverse isomorphism turns out to be continuous automatically. And this is a theorem called the Banach isomorphism theorem. It's a non-trivial theorem using the open mapping theorem, um, the way we're going to prove it, um, which is a, a major consequence of the Bayer category theorem. So it's uh, not obvious. So that's C later when we get to the Banach isomorphism theorem. So here's an exercise for you. It's to find some norm spaces, and this is on a question sheet. To find some norm spaces and a linear isomorphism, which is continuous, but whose inverse is discontinuous. And the, you can't do this with finite dimensional spaces because all linear maps from finite dimensional norms, from a finite dimensional norm space, every linear map is continuous. So you can't do it that way. Um, hint, whenever you find, whenever something is true for all Banach spaces, and you want to find a norm space counterexample, C00 is often useful. <laughs> um, you can put lots of different norms on it, like one of the little LP norms or L-infinity or whatever, e.g. using some norm P. But on this subspace. That gives you a really nice supply of incomplete norm spaces, and it's very useful when you're looking for interesting linear maps that do bad things. So I'll let you think about that exercise. That's, I think, a good place to start today. <laughs>